A-list actor Tom Hardy is no stranger to BJJ competitions and action-packed movies. And now he's just made his return to the mats once again over the last week. You may know him from his role in the movie Warrior, where he played a skilled MMA fighter. Well, it turns out that Tom Hardy didn't just learn those moves for the movie. He's been training and competing in grappling tournaments ever since. And get this, he's been crushing it. Despite being a surprise to many, Hardy has already racked up an impressive number of wins. But that's not all. In his most recent competition, Hardy faced off against a tough opponent who caught him in a tight guillotine choke. But did that stop him? Hell no. Hardy showed off his tenacity and determination as he fought his way out of the chokehold and swiftly passed into his opponent's side control. It looked like he was about to take the victory right then and there. However, before he locked his hooks, he fell to the side and sunk in a triangle choke instead, which led to his submission victory. A lot of people would have tapped to that guillotine he was locked in, but he kept his composure and it worked out well for him. Despite his busy schedule, Hardy has been constantly training and improving in BJJ, and let us tell you, that's no small feat. BJJ takes an insane amount of dedication and hard work to become proficient in, but Hardy has been up to the task, impressing both fans and peers alike with his skills on the mat. He's already a 4th degree blue belt in BJJ, and that itself is no small achievement. And we have a feeling that it won't be long until he's awarded his purple belt. Just to show you how serious he is about his grappling game, Hardy even competed in the Reorg Open Championship in August of 2022. And guess what? He dominated. Hardy took home the gold in both the Gi and the No Gi competitions. That's right, he's a champ in both. But do you want to see Tom make a transition to grappling sometime? Let us know in the comments below. We've all heard the saying that practice makes perfect when it comes to MMA, but sometimes things can go wrong during training and sparring sessions. One such incident occurred a few years back when an instructor sparred with his student and placed all of his weight on the student's neck, crushing his cervical vertebrae. The instructor was heavily criticized for his actions, but recently some notable combat sports athletes have shared their opinions on the incident. Gordon Ryan and Tom DeBlas have weighed in on the matter, and it seems that Chris Weedman and some other fans are also backing up the claims against the instructor. It is a stark reminder that while training and sparring are important aspects of combat sports, safety should always be the top priority. DeBlas and Gordon Ryan co-posted on Instagram and explained the accident, defending the instructor who had been facing criticism for negligence. They also revealed that the student involved received a massive $46 million compensation for the incident. Chris Weedman also shared his opinions on the matter, stating in the comments sections that based on the video, he believes it was a complete accident. As always, the fans have always been vocal in the comments section, sharing their thoughts and opinions on the incident. Fans sided with the BJJ practitioner's opinions on the video clip that went viral, and many agreed to the fact that the incident was a result of a freak accident. One social media user said, agreed 1000%. Another fan added, an accident. Those judging the instructor are clearly trying to take advantage of a tragedy to promote themselves. But what do you think of the clip? Do you think that this was a mere freak accident? Or was there malicious intent involved? Be sure to share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Cyril Ghosn welcomed John Jones back to the MMA at UFC 285 earlier in March. The highly anticipated bout was short-lived as Jones submitted Ghosn in the first round with ease. Now, you might be wondering, why we're including a UFC fight in a news recap for grappling, right? Well, the focus of this particular news is a man who is supposed to help Cyril Ghosn prepare for the epic clash. We're talking about Nicky Rodriguez, a two-time silver medalist at ADCC and BJJ Phenom. Rodriguez featured on a bi-weekly show called The Simple Man Podcast, alongside BJJ stars Ethan Krelestine and Damian Anderson. During episode 17 of the podcast, Rodriguez disclosed why he did not travel to France to help Cyril Ghosn. Well, yeah, they, I was supposed to go to France to train with Cyril, but uh, the numbers didn't work out, and it was like I had a bunch of seminars and stuff planned, um, and they weren't trying to, or not, so, not, to yeah, they weren't gonna, numbers. weren't trying to compensate me, and I, it wasn't necessarily Cyril, but um, you know his manager or whatnot. Yeah. But uh, man, like if if he had some proper grappling training, I mean, he could definitely could have did a little bit better. Nicky Rodriguez may have only started training BJJ in 2018 he's already making waves in the world of grappling. 
The former college wrestler quickly rose to prominence, earning a silver medal at the ADCC Submission Fighting World Championships in just his second year of BJJ training. Known as Nicky Rod, he's become a rising star in the grappling world, and his skills were put to the test when he joined Cyril Gaon's training camp. Having a two-time ADCC silver medalist on hand would undoubtedly have given Gaon a significant advantage in his grappling abilities against John Jones. It just goes to show how quickly someone can make an impact in the world of BJJ with hard work and determination. But do you think that Nicky Raw would have helped Gon turn the ties against John Jones? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, we'd love to know whether you enjoyed the video so far. If so, please subscribe to Valor Strategy Grappling and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos. With that said, let's move on to our next news of the day. This past weekend also marked the return of Fight Circus, which came back for its sixth edition and took place in Thailand. For those of you who don't know anything about Fight Circus, it's basically an amalgamation of some of the weirdest fights that you'll ever watch. The sixth edition include a first ever 2v1 fight card, a tug of war match, and a musical Chairs of Doom in which the winner can choose who they want to fight and set the rules for the fight. The main event, however, was the real highlight of the day as Rampage Jackson joined hands with Bob Sapp and fought John Nutt and Andrew Wood in a Siamese boxing match. If you want to know what that means, just watch this small clip here. Long story short, all hell broke loose and even the ref got pulled in for one of the punches. However, the ref retaliated and set up what was perhaps one of the funniest moments of the night. Watch this replay here of Fight Circus 6 and all of its oddities and you can read the full result card here. After defeating Bianca Basilo at one fight night eight, Temi Musumeci is open to a rematch with Danielle Kelly. Temi Musumeci, a five-time IBJJF World Champion, made her one championship debut and won a decision victory over Bianca Basilo at one fight night eight, Superleg vs. Williams. During the 10 minute submission only bout, Musumeci repeatedly pulled guard, which was warned under the one submission's grappling rule set. While she struggled to establish a dominant position and didn't achieve a meaningful submission attempt, Musumeci was more aggressive and was willing to take risks throughout the match. In an interview with One Championship after the bout, Musumeci expressed her disappointment in not being able to secure a submission. She, she kept disengaging, which was made the fight harder for me and also probably worse for the fans because if we would have stayed in, then one of us could have got to a position or one of us could have got to a submission. I really feel if I get another opportunity with this, um, whenever I get it, I will definitely, especially if I fight someone that doesn't run away, I'll definitely get the sub. Frustrated as she might be with the lack of submission finish and Basilio's failure to engage on the ground, Musumeci is ultimately pleased to have defeated such an accomplished and dangerous opponent. And after tasting the bright lights of one circle, she's ready to return to the action and showcase the full breadth of her world-class jiu-jitsu. But, I mean, it's one of those situations again where I did the best with the situation, you know? But it also makes me feel pretty good because that is the best girl at 125. So hopefully now any matches I have, that was the top, you know? And now I'm very excited again to fight people with different styles because then I'll be able to showcase my jiu-jitsu more. Tammy Musumeci's brother Mike currently holds the flyweight submission grappling world title in one championship. However, Tammy wants to one-up her brother and win titles in multiple classes. For the second weight class, Temmie's has her eyes set on Danielle Kelly for a rematch. I mean, I fought Danielle Kelly before, like, a year ago. Um, I heard she wants to fight me. I mean, I'd be down um, for that. I could I could definitely make 115. Um, I've made 115 in jiu-jitsu, and that's where you, you literally weigh in and then you fight right after. I, I like 125 a lot more because I like having muscles. Oh, <laughs> that And then... And I like uh, eating a lot of pizza and getting to eat ice cream up until a week before. Um, but for 115, I mean, I definitely to make that weight. It's it won't be as fun as the 125, but I think as at my height, I'm definitely probably built more for 115. Do you think that Tammy can make this big achievement over her brother? Be sure to share your thoughts with us in the comments below. And this brings us to the last news of the day where we unveil BJJ Stars 10, which has been scheduled for April 22nd. BJJ Stars have organized an elite Grand Prix that includes top BJJ competitors from various weight classes. The Absolute Grand Prix features some of the best Brazilian grapplers in the bracket, including Kainan Duarte, Felipe Andrew, Patrick Gaudio, Victor Hugo, and Eric Muniz, who all stand a good chance at winning. 
Additionally, Mika Galval, the lightest athlete in the bracket, has chosen to participate in the Grand Prix rather than a middleweight super fight. However, Roberto Cyborg Abreu, who is currently serving a three-year suspension from IBJJF competition due to a failed PED test, has also been invited to compete. Devontae Johnson and Adam Wardinsky are the only non-Brazilians competing in the Grand Prix. You can read the full announcement on BJJ Star Instagram account. And that concludes our news recap for today. What was your favorite news of today? Be sure to sound off in the comments section below.